Welcome back. Here we are with something brand new. This is another new technique that is very popular on my YouTube channel, and it's called the cross meat system. And it really helps you find things that you missed, which is great. So here we go. Let's look at just this first of all. Ones, well, one, 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 this one, one can be in there, but using TMB. Now twos, there's only one, two, but let me show you now. See this? This is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using for the cross meat technique. I'm going to do it for threes. And now we, what we do is we look for a block that doesn't have a three. And then look to see if there's other blocks that do have a three and we then cross them. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a three here. I'm going to put this here and over, over to there. A bit further go over so it won't, st won't stick. So there's a three right there. Remember that. Okay. Now we'll take another one. And there's there, is there another three that we can cross in this block? Yes, there is. Here's a three there. So I can put a three here and here. So what that does is it blocks off this block here. And all we see is that empty cell that's left, and that has to be a three. So let's put the three in. That's using the cross meat system. Now, I've used these pieces of cardboard, but I have a friend, as I'll tell you later on the video, that used the pieces of paper. But just to demonstrate how that works. OK, now let's look at um, if that's a three. Now we have two threes. We have three, a middle, a bottom, and we can make this one um, a this one here, three, a top, a bottom, and a top. Okay, so now let's go on to uh, another one. We're going to use fives this time. Let me see now. Where are the fives? Here's a five on this block in here, and here's the five up here. So let's block that one off, make this five, and we're still looking at the same. We're still looking at this block here. Now we take this one here, and we put, the, put this down in here because there's a five there and cover up the block that we're trying to look for a five because the f this block doesn't have a five. And what does it show us? It says that this, in this cell are empty and that's the only place a five can go. So isn't that neat? That's, that's called the cross meet section. Sometimes they cross each other, sometimes they meet each other. So without further ado, I'm going to suggest that you uh, have a look uh, by the way, because of this five, uh, you can have a five down in here, and that means that one of these is going to be a five. And uh, because of that, we, because of this here, we have an eight here and an eight there. This, comes, this becomes an eight. And because this seven can't go down here, it has to go up there, that becomes a seven, and now this becomes a seven. So let's have a look at the next segment. Hello. Here we are again, the Sudoku guy with, guess what? A brand new technique which is so good. I tell you what, this technique will help you find big numbers and small numbers and most important of all, it'll help you find what you missed. You notice up on the top here there's funny little symbols. Don't worry about that. I'll tell you about that later. But have you ever been doing a puzzle and you get stuck, so you leave it, you go off, come back later, and you look at it, and then you say, Duh! How come I didn't see that before? Well, this technique is going to help you find those things that you missed. It's so easy to miss. So, let's do the puzzle. Here we go. We'll do the horizontal blocks first. Let's take the ones. We have only one. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned, in this puzzle, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to deliberately miss out some things. You ready for that? See if you can recognize them. Okay, as I said, there's only one one. Twos, I'm going to leave. Threes, there's only one three. Four, there's no fours. Fives. There are two fives, a top and a bottom, so in this block it has to be in the middle, so there it goes there. Sixes, 
no sixes, sevens. Oh, here's a little technique I'm going to show you. Watch this. In this block, we don't have a seven. We know from that seven that you cannot have a seven there and there because it's already spoken for in that row. Therefore, the seven has to be up in one of these three cells. If that's the case, we look down. Okay, let's take this cell here. We look down. Oop, that seven cancels that one out. In this column, that seven cancels this one out. So therefore, a seven must go there. Now, we have two sevens. We have a top and a bottom, so we can work out where the sevens go across in this block. Well, again, we could have a seven, 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 but let's look down. This seven means you can't have a seven there. This seven means that it cancels out a seven here. Therefore, the seven has to go there. Let's look at eights. Let me see now. Oh, we have all the eights, top, middle, and bottom. Nines. Well, the nines are very similar to the sevens. Let's look at this. Because the nine is there, you can't have a nine in this block anywhere in here because it's spoken for because of that row already having a nine. So therefore, we know for a fact that a nine could go in here. But you know what? Let's look down. Am I, let me, before I put that in, let's look down. Oh, this nine cancels out that cell, so therefore this definitely becomes a nine. Now we've got two nines, a top and a bottom. We can work out what should go in here. Let's have a look. If a nine was there, uh, there's no nine there, so that would be a little nine. And here there's no nine, so that becomes a little nine. So that, that's a really neat little technique to watch for. Well now folks, we've now gone through those basic procedures. We now look for rows, columns and blocks that have only got one or two cells left. And when I look at that, I tell you, I cannot find any. So now what do we do? Well, this is where we come to this next technique I want to teach you. See all these symbols up here? In each case, we have a, a vertical line. In this case, in the case of this puzzle, it's a, it's a column. And a horizontal line, in this case, it's a row, that either cross each other or meet each other. Look at each one of these. They're all right angles. And they all either cross each other or meet each other. And so with that idea in mind, let me show you how to do the cross-meet system. First of all, we'll start at nine and we'll work through to we'll start at one and work through till nine. So let's say we look for a block that doesn't have a one. And I notice that this block doesn't have a one. But we have a one over here and we have a one over here. Let's intersect or meet, have those cross each other and see what happens. If I take this one and go up, it will cancel that cell and that cell. If I take this one and go this way, it'll cancel that cell and that cell. Only two left are that one and that one for a one. Now, I have to say a word of uh, thanks here to one of my students who I was giving a private lesson. Her name was Erica wonderful lady. She showed me what the pieces of paper and she would put these pieces of paper along the columns to help her find out the empty cells. Now we can't do it with paper on here so I'm using these pieces of cardboard just to show you what she did. You may not need to do this but it's just another way of doing it. Here's the one down in here and there's and so I'll put one there covering up our block without the one. Whoops, I'll try another one. <laughs> I'll try that one, how's that? And here is this one. We'll cover that one up by doing this. Now we've covered up this block using that one and using this one to find out that there's two empty cells. And we know by doing that that this is a one and that is a possible one.
So that's what she was doing, using strips of paper to help her do this. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but if it helps you, great. Now, let's, let's do another one here. Here's a one. We can go one across here. We can do a one down in here. Let's do that one. I'll do this one here, going straight down that column. And here's a one that goes across, so we'll do that one too. That one as well. Is that better? <laughs> okay. And this block doesn't have a one. But you know, a one could go there, there, and there. If that's the case, don't put any ones in. Because, let me assure you, that it will lead to more confusion and it's much better to just put little numbers in two cells within a block. So, later on when you get to very advanced levels you could put in three, but for the time being just limit it to two. If it, goes, if it can go in more than two, just leave it, don't put anything in. So, let's go down to twos. Well, here's two here. So what she would do, to, she'd do this, she'd put that across there, and then she'd, oh, okay, let me, let me do it this way. She'd do this, I just messed up a nine there. She put that two there, she'd put a two here, because this is crossing here. She put that two there, because there's a two underneath there. Then she would get a one more, she had three pieces of paper, and she would do this. There's a two here, so she'd cover that two up. Oh dear, he's not sticking today. Oh dear. Anyway, let me just hold them for you. There would be a two there and a two there. Now guess what? In this block there's only one place for a two and it's right there. So that's what she was doing with her pieces of paper. You may be able to visually do it just as well. Some people have more difficulty by just looking up, taking this two going up, that cancels this one out. I'll just correct this nine if I may. And then she take this two, this, this two here, that cancels this one out. And uh, you finish, and you take this two and go that way, cancels this one out, and you finish up with uh, a real two. So let's go to the fives now. Fives, we're gonna cross with the fives. And this was in one of those things that I missed, and I want to show you the fantastic way in which the, you can find mistakes, or find, not mistakes necessarily, but find what you missed. Here's a five here, here's a five here. If we put it over the top of, if we put it over the top of this puzzle, this, this block here, there's only one left place left where it can go. Therefore, you can put a five here in confidence. So this has to be a five. Whoops, I muffed it up there. So this has to be a five. Wasn't that funny? It was a really hot day when I filmed that and the cardboard tapes just wouldn't stick. However, roll with it. Now, along the bottom you'll see my email and if you want to go onto YouTube, you can always make comments under the videos and I'll always answer them for you. Now here's a question that came from my son, believe it or not, Darren, who happens to be overseas, and he says to me, Dad, um, how often do you do puzzles and where? Well, I, I do them usually every day um, while I'm having breakfast, listening to the radio. Whenever I've been traveling as a tour guide in the past, I found myself uh, with lots of time to fill in, so I did them then as well. It's up to you when you do them. Bye for now.